it's important for this island because the island itself had not had a lot of love for a really long time. There's actually a quote in a scientific paper in the early 1980s that actually quotes Lady Elliot Island as being an example of the worst of humanity, of how you can completely destroy an ecosystem. To see it come from that, to now being shown as being one of the healthier reefs on the entire Great Barrier Reef, is an amazing story. So my name is Dr. Kathy Townsend. I'm the senior lecturer from the University of the Sunshine Coast. Uh, and I'm also the lead academic for Leaf to Reef, which is this multidisciplinary project that's supported by the Great Barrier Reef Foundation, part of their Islands Initiative project. So we're here on Lady Elliot Island. Um, as you'll see as we go through the story, Leaf to Reef itself is a project that's been brought together around concern about some of these coral reef islands, because these coral reef caves and, and reefs like Lady Elliot Reef are undergoing a huge range of different types of pressures. And so here at Lady Elliot Island, what we're doing is we're looking at, first of all, the possibility that this is going to be a island refuge or a kind of arc, so to speak. As climate change kicks in and as animals are having to deal with temperatures that are really hot further north, those mobile creatures can actually pick up and move and they will actually start to move into these southern cooler waters like Lady Elliot Island. And the team here, our team from Leaf to Reef, has actually done some early level modeling and it turns out that this reef, unlike all the other reefs on the Great Barrier Reef, will either maintain its biodiversity or increase its biodiversity. That's what's predicted to happen in the future. But to understand that and to see that happening, you need to understand what's here already. The other component of Leaf to Reef is we're trying to understand what's happening with the island from connecting what happens on land through to what happens to the sea. So there's a revegetation program happening right now. And we're trying to understand if you change the vegetation, how does that potentially change the birds that you have within those areas? And the birds are the ones that are bringing nutrients to the island, and that nutrient is ultimately heading out to the ocean. So what, how, how is the land connected to the sea? So I've brought together this amazing team of experts that have a range of skills that are, is absolutely fantastic. So um, as I said, I'm the project leader of, of this particular group. We've got Chris Dudgeon, who is a specialist in computer modeling. She does a lot of um, shark tagging um, and is basically my second in command. <laughs> she is very much leading this, so she's the project lead. Um, we've got Asia Haynes, who is our communication officer, and she does a lot of work with the manta rays in particular, but a lot of the other animals, uh, particularly a lot of fish and sharks and rays as well. She's very fortunate to have two of the world's best computer modelers and experts in climate change, Dr. David Skoman and Dr. Um, Anthony Richardson. And um, they are experts in climate change, but they're also experts in plankton dynamic. Speaking of plankton, <laughs> we also have Julian, who is our um, plankton expert who's come in from CSIRO and has been really helping us trying to understand the types of plankton that we have. And of course we have our fish team and our fish and coral team 
consists of Dr. Ben Gilby, um, Sarah, and also Hayden, who have been doing fish surveys as well as benthic surveys. So we can see and changes over time. The bird team consists of Dr. Dominic Potvin, um, Zara Edgerton, Professor Mike Bennett, and he's doing the very broad scale uh, bird surveys, as well as do, trying to calculate how much nitrogen the uh, birds are creating. And speaking of nutrients, then that brings us um, to Associate Professor uh, Dirk uh, Erler. Dirk is our geomorphology expert. So he's really looking at um, understanding the groundwater, how are the nutrients getting into the groundwater, what does the water table look like, and how is the water table that sits under the island actually getting out to the rest of the reef, and where is that all going? And then the other team is the turtle team. And the turtle team is myself um, and Caitlin Smith and Jason Vandermeer from Griffith University. And we're looking at the impacts of things like plastics and other toxins that might be happening on animals within the region. Scientists, we're good at talking to one another, you know, we've got the data at hand, but really the important thing is to be able to take what we've understood and communicate it to a broader audience. Because if we can take the general public on a journey with us, um, things like climate change all of a sudden aren't a big scary dropping out of the sky type of things. Because if, if the audience or the general public are taken along the journey of the understanding and, and science isn't a final, like every time we go out into the field we learn new things and so it's, it's not like this is the way it is, we are adjusting and changing. So things like this, you know, the things that we're doing here is really important. So you can see what we're doing, see what we're up to um, and then take you on that journey as well. I haven't got all the answers. You know, I haven't got all the answers to, say, for example, figure out ways to solve climate change or ways to figure out how to stop marine debris. But I can help contribute a bit of information. And once people have understood that, then they can go forward and come up with ideas themselves. Well, what can I do to help? What is the small thing that I can do in my own person help to reduce the impact on the environment? and help make it a healthy and vibrant place into the future.